Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of To Whom It May Concern. I'm your host, Malak, here with my co-host, Koela Mariam and Inara. Hey, Sonikam. So one of the newest trends going around social media is being considered the main character. (laughs) What is the main character, you may ask? So typically, we like to think our lives are a movie, right? There's ups, there's downs, there's romance, there's comedy, happy ending, not so happy ending, then everything in between. But oftentimes, people have used the term main character to describe different individuals with different personalities. Now, from what I understand on social media and how I've heard it being used is of two ways. So one way is just trying to be like, oh, you're the main character. So live like a main character, you know, like take the risks, take the falls, enjoy the highs, enjoy the lows. But another interpretation of it is just somebody with that kind of persona that demands the attention. Like they just seem like when they're in the room. They're the main character and everyone's just living in their life. So have you heard the term or like seen on social media or anything? And what are your thoughts on it? I have not seen on social media, but that's because I haven't been on social media. But I have heard it multiple times from my younger cousins. And every single time I've heard it, I'm like, what is what do you mean by that? I (laughs) I personally don't like that term because I feel like it makes certain people seem as if they're more important than the other people around them. Like, Oh, you're the main character. So you deserve the attention and you're more important than everyone else. So that's why that's my interpretation of it. And that's why I dislike it. Mm. I think it depends. Cause I feel like those definitions, those two definitions that you gave Malak could differ in how I feel about it. Because if you're saying be the main character in your life, like making sure that, you make the best out of your life, like, you know, taking care of yourself. Like in that sense, I'm okay with like you focusing on you. But then if you're looking at it in the sense of where Huayla's perspective, where it says I'm important and forget about you guys. And it's about like me and like, who's the one who's like wild in the conversation, who always gets like the most attention. And like, you guys are less than kind of attitude then like, that's a, also a different type of Like that, I totally disagree with. So I feel like it just depends on how you look at what you define the main character to be. I think it started off as such like an interesting concept because people wanted, I mean, the way we live our lives is just that everything's so mundane, everything's so boring, right? We have a very routine pattern. That's just, you know, what living is, what life is. You go to work, you come home, you know, you have these fun adventures in between. And I think people wanted to break that up with the concept of no, romanticize your life, make everything interesting. You are the main character, take control. But I think people took that and then went a whole other dimension with it. And that's why I have a problem with it. I feel like Nowadays, when people say make you the main character, they're kind of, I'm not saying being individualistic about it, but it's like you are the most important thing in the entire universe and you should act like it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it kind of went off the rails a little bit. I just think like, why do we have to pretend like we're in a movie? Like this is real life. Things are going to be routine. You have maybe like, a vacation here, that'll make something not routine. You do something different here, that'll that'll make it not routine. But like overall, why do we have to pretend as if we're on screen? That's no, not I, even with like, oh, make yourself the main character of your life. Like, calm down. This is like <laughs> No, I get it. It's fun to shift your perspective and just make things that are routine more interesting just by having a brighter perspective about it. Like if you're going to work and you're gonna scan sheets. Just like, to, I don't know, up the scale of it, make it just more interesting. So your life isn't so just you fall, you feel like you're in a rut sometimes. But even then, like movies don't show the mundane part of work. They just show like the fun parts or this or like, and then it skips over the boring parts and it makes us feel like, oh my God, my life is so boring because I have to sit eight hours doing the same job. True. Which is why a movie is only an hour and a half. Like they're cutting <laughs> all that boring stuff that you're doing. <laughs> exactly. So it's like we're thinking like, oh, life is a movie, but it's really not. Yeah. It only becomes a problem when you think your life is supposed to be constantly like engaging, constantly romanticized, constantly fun. And then when you realize it's not, I mean, like, people get sad, like they're living life wrong somehow. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like everybody else is having fun on it, especially when you see it on social media because they only get one minute clips two to show their lives. But I do think it subconsciously does make us feel that way. Yeah, I agree. I'm also thinking, I'm not sure if this is really like a new concept. I think it's a new term, like being the main character. But I feel like in general, like humans have always wanted to see, like, how do I fit into society? What can I bring to society? How can I contribute? What makes my story different? So I feel like maybe we, now they labeled it main character, but I feel like that thought is only human nature to be like, what can I do to make my life more exciting, more different? What can I contribute? What impact can I make? And I feel like they just added that term to like, ignite that and like make you seem like okay how do you make it really exciting i feel like it's just a new term for this generation you know i don't know if it's really a new concept so i just from like the mid 2000s i feel like to today everything that has been coming out or whether it be social media or like new phone products like apple products you know there's always that whole um conspiracy like iphone and everything is like built for a person to be very individually obsessed right to like make a lot of things about yourself and we see that with social media instagram facebook myspace once upon a time twitter like all that stuff is used to augment you putting your best version of yourself out there so do you think that using terms like main character or implementing more of that stuff in social media it's just continuing to like push that narrative that you need to be the best you need to always be doing the best you need to be like now your peers are looking at you. They look at their friends and they're like, wow, that friend's a main character. That friend's not a main character. Like, do you feel like it continues to push that narrative where we feel like we're always competing and we always have to be making things about ourselves and doing better? I think that's two different things. So I think in general, we should always try to improve ourselves and be the best person we can, whether it's like out in front of public versus behind the scenes. But I don't think this whole concept of main characters making like comparison, like, oh, she's a main character. He's not a main character. So like even the term, I guess, main character in my own life, sometimes you're not the main character of your own life in the sense that like you're not always doing things for yourself. Like there's so many times where it's like I'm deciding to do something for someone else and putting that person in front of me. So like whether let's say you have someone sick in your family and you're like taking care of that person. So your life is dedicated to what they need and what they want versus, okay, I'm going to put myself on the back burner and help this person maybe stay up all night and help them with their homework or help them study for a test. You know? So sometimes you're not doing things just for yourself. And it, that concept is, it sounds very individualistic when a lot of the times we shouldn't be, a lot of things are very communal and very, I guess it's dependent on other people. Well, going back to your first point, I think it could be something of comparison when people go, oh, that person's a main character, but you're kind of not. And that is so offensive to hear. Like, imagine someone being like, yeah, you're you're not a main character. You don't give me main character vibes. Like, what does that even mean? I think I'm the main character of my own life. I would sure hope so. You know, and I think people are using that these days. Yeah. In that context. That's why I said it started off as a beautiful, like, concept to think about but then just kind of totally got detracted and people started using it as comparisons well I oh, know that person's traveling that person has mm-hmm. such a fun life they're the main character mm-hmm. or not I feel like it also means when I hear that like when people start like labeling their friend group I feel like it always goes back to like who's the loudest who's the one who's the most talkative who is the so it's just it's a different personality type so I feel like you're looking at your extroverts you're looking at people who yeah you know, so I feel like even then like is that what a main character looks like so are you like removing other people who tend to be more quieter you're more listeners are they not like a main character so I feel like even when you start throwing terms on people and like you're looking at your friend group I feel like that is even like what does that even mean so people well, typically, even in you know movies, well typically in movies I feel like the main characters tend to be the people that are the loudest or have no. the most no it depends on what movie they type you're looking into like what, oh, what, you, know, what movie even, type even if you start a movie with where the main character is like oh the shy girl like she becomes like loud <laughs> going yeah she definitely I does. feel like I feel like a lot of movies and books romanticize shy awkward girls that have a lot of anxiety and then all these amazing things happen to them it's like see it's okay if you're shy and awkward mm-hmm. like that's what I feel I like know, but, but I, I feel like the character development is that it goes from a shy girl to like outgoing to taking risks to breaking out of her shell like yeah. I feel like that end image is always like 
putting yourself forward. Like, it literally depends on the movie. Taking risks. What is it? It depends on the movie. That's the thing. Like, it literally depends on the movie and what you make it out to be. No, I will say this. I think it doesn't matter if they're shy or, or quieter or more um, out there. I think it depends on the person's confidence. I think when you go down to the root of it, main character energy is the person that exudes a lot of confidence regardless if they're talking or if they're silent they just like have that presence and i think that's what main character energy or vibes is where like, I agree. they're always noticeable in a mm-hmm. sense but people usually equate confidence with extra being extroverted like oh she's not shy to talk loud or she's not like she's cracking jokes like oh she's so confident in herself even though that's not necessarily the case, but a lot of times they do equate the two. So what would you guys say to all those that have heard that they're side characters? <laughs> I find that offensive too. If, so yeah. that's, I guess that's also why I don't like the term because saying someone is a main character and someone's not like that. If it's offensive, it's like you shouldn't be saying it in general. But do you guys feel like there are people that carry a persona that makes you feel like they should be the main character. Like now that like now that you've heard the definition, can you honestly say that people don't come to mind where you're like in a group or something and you're like, I get it. Like I can understand where that term came from or where it was coined from. I don't think, oh yeah, they're the main character. I just think people bring different types of like things to the group. Like they bring different like personality and conversations and style and vibes. But I wouldn't say this is the main character. Like I just feel like it's, it's such a, I don't like the term, but okay. I, hey, in general, like, away. no, I get it. Like I've seen someone and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can yeah. see why people have dubbed this main character. That person got up, the vibes. I remember growing up, I had one of my best friends. This guy told her, he's like, man, I just want to watch what you do. Like, I, like, I wish there was a movie about like your life because she was so like, <laughs> that's kind of that he did. I know that sounds really creepy, but like the thing, like her personality, the things that she does and says, he's just like, 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 how do you live your life? You're so, you're such an interesting character. Like, so yeah. for him, like maybe that was like, she maybe like displayed main character, like characteristics. Okay. And, uh, and you thinking back to that and with the conversation that we're having, can you look back at, okay, don't take out the term main character, whatever, but can you look back and think like, yeah, that makes sense. Like I get why that specific person wanted to watch her life or something like that. It's because she was like different. The things that she said did like, that's why people thought it was like, entertaining to watch you know, entertaining <laughs> it was like an entertainment you know definitely there are people with personalities that are more like captivating I guess like if you're in a group some people like stick out more than others and mm-hmm. it does have a lot to do with personality but the thing is like main character I guess when it goes back to main character it's because like they have the character development and all these supporting roles they just they're very I guess two-dimensional or one-dimensional like you don't really see much character development when that's not the case because every person has their own life, mm-hmm. their own story. And this concept belittles others, which is what I don't like about it. It's mm-hmm. like, yes, this person maybe is the funny person. And when you get together, you want that person to definitely be there because they make the make the gather or make the, the setting more enjoyable. But it's like everyone else contributes. Maybe that person makes it more enjoyable, but this person is the more helpful one so they can actually set up this person's creative so she can make it look pretty, you know? So it's like everyone contributes in different ways and every person has their own character development, but it's like different personalities, I guess, have that main character vibe, even though it's not more important than others. I see what people are getting at, but I still don't like it. So you think, so people have always thought it. You just didn't think it was necessary to coin a term for it. I just don't think it's like, that's the one that's catching fire. So everyone's giving that more attention. It's like, I guess that's the case with everything in life. Only certain things get more attention than others. Like people always give the main character, the main actors more attention or the singers more attention rather than the rest of the band or the people behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Like that's always the case. Like that one person gets the attention and then everyone else that's putting their hard work or that's contributing in different ways. Isn't really recognized. Can't this can't main term be just like a variant of differentiating between leaders and followers. Like, is it not, is it not offensive to call somebody a leader and the rest followers? And that's something that's been around 
since forever. Everyone coins people as like leaders and followers. Can it not just be a variant of the same thing? The funny thing is I spoke about this with my aunt. And when I first said the term main character, she agreed with it. She's like, yeah, some people are main characters. And she used it as leaders. She's like, mm-hmm. yeah, the people are leaders. They're the ones that take kind of like the stand and do to make change and this and that. But the way our generation uses it, I don't feel like they refer to it as leaders. Because What feel do you like think? What do you think the reference is to? Just the people that are more fun and like taking risks over like these silly things. Mm. <laughs> That's how I like, I feel like it's used in a silly manner, but I do agree that there are certain people that are good at leading and some people that are good at doing and following. So like, so, so you don't think, so you think it's offensive to be a main character and side characters, but you don't think it's offensive to consider people leaders and followers. Yes. When the leader followers roles like that's been around obviously for generations and even I think before this whole main character side character there was like oh I'm the alpha and then there's the betas like I think that was the whole before TikTok trend type of thing and I just think when you dub people these labels like Huayla was mentioning earlier you make it seem like one is insignificant but in reality you can't be a leader without any followers and to get something done, you need one person to be more kind of decisive and more picky with what you're doing. So both are extremely important. It's just that in society, we dub one less important. But I, think I think that's, that's where thing. what bothers me about it. I think that's the same thing with the main character, side character. Like you can't be a main character without supporting roles. Yeah. But like, is that why was it OK for people to be called leaders and followers? But suddenly when there's a new term for it. People are taking more to heart because it's compared to movies. Like, is that what it is? Like, and I feel like, what are people on TikTok really like? Oh, she's a main character because she's going skydiving. Whereas, whether when I think of like leaders, I'm thinking like SJP making rally or like SJP Chicago making a rally for Fall of Steen or like the civil rights movement, MLK and uh, Malcolm X. They were leaders. Like, those are the people I'm thinking about. Leaders, like they're making changes. So then, if it's something that's so like silly or something that shouldn't be taken seriously do you think people should take it to heart like should you be offended if a main character is just somebody that's doing silly things people do because it's more like (laughs) of a like social interaction between people like even though it is silly because our generation is like obsessed over like social media and what people are doing and how people are like comparing themselves to others that's why it's important if you're calling that person like a main character and saying you're a sidekick, so you're calling me like boring, somebody that doesn't do anything, you know, like that, what, what, like, what does it mean? You're, it's not like you're saying you're like nice and helpful and you're like, that's usually you intend the opposite of like what you, the other person you're highlighting is characteristics. So I feel like that's why it usually like takes offense because you're like, I, okay, you're calling me the opposite of that. So, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's where you get offended. But I feel like the, the term leaders and followers always held the same connotation. Like a follower is just somebody that doesn't take initiative, that just do does what's asked. No, but you're supporting a good cause. Like you're helping out a good cause. Not like necessi- no, no, not necessarily. That's not always what the context is used for. When people say, oh, when your parents ask you, oh, all your friends jump off of a cliff, would you do it? Like that's when people use leaders and followers, it's very rarely used in the term like, oh, they're no. doing an event. Are you following the event? It was, it's very rarely used like that, no, no, you guys. No. That's, yeah. only, that's only if you're following something stupid. But that's, but like that's, this, like, like this is the character sidekick. <laughs> like, if, like, like if I was part of, if I was going to the rally, I'm not like a rally for something good. I'm not, maybe I'm not one of the speakers or one of the leaders of that, but I'm proud that I'm going to something important. I don't but nobody, that but nobody ever, but nobody ever saw you go to a rally and said you're a follower. It's more in the context like somebody did something they were supposed to, or somebody's doing things, and you're okay. just naively following. That's what the connotation follower means. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you say it in that way, because it's used for negative things. But when you're talking about like that person's a great leader, and look at all their like followers, that like when it's used in that sort of context, it's not negative. If it's but if it's for something good, but if you're following something bad, then it's like, oh, you're just a follower. You're not doing anything important. But my my thing is, I understand like the exact definition of leader and follower. That's what the exact definition is. But growing up, how the actual, I feel like 
the way people were using it, the mundane pe- we people were saying leaders and followers, it was very rarely, rarely ever to say, oh, she's leading like a rally and they're all following. It was more in the context of like leaders and followers among friends, leaders and followers among classmates. Like I see. that's what people were using it from. And yes. when you even heard your parents talk about children or talk about others, there was always that idea of like this child is a leader, you're a follower. Or like, I'm worried about this child because they're early, easily peer pressured, they're a follower. Like things of that nature. And I think main character, side character, just like, I feel like it's more offensive because like what you said, Koyla, it's more of like a social aspect. But in the reality of situation, we've been coining terms to differentiate between people for decades. Like this isn't something that's new. It's yeah. just a new term for it. Or we just coined it a different way. Which is what I find so interesting. Is that even healthy to start classifying people? Like, is it, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, we constantly feel the need to do this, whether it's race, right? Like, age. Like, we always have, feel the need to classify people and put them in groups and categories. And I feel yeah. like that in itself sometimes causes problems and where you start to think, like, I'm better than... And I think that's where the divisions begin to happen amongst that's people. part of our, like... I guess psychological makeup because we're always doing it. We like to classify mm-hmm. things, group things. Things in pattern, yeah. Yeah, like that's how we are naturally. I think I guess because that's how it is naturally, the, the bad part is if we start saying one is negative, one is better. Like mm-hmm. that's when it becomes a problem. Like there's no problem with saying like me and Malak are wearing yellow, mm-hmm. you guys are wearing black shirts. Like that's like that's the difference like we're grouped together you're grouped together but like oh you guys are less than us or we're better than you like that's when the problem becomes yeah I think when you start doing like social classifications you know like I feel like basic like patterns and stuff, grouping is fine like these this is you know this is this type of animal whatever but once you start looking at like status and who's better than like social in like the social realm I feel like that's where things become problematic but then should we get rid of it because then I'm, I feel like I'm proposing communism right like <laughs> <laughs> you should be all in the same plane, like you know, like. Yeah. But, here's but if you think about it, hold on, because I think our brains naturally do this because of mm-hmm. survival, like in its adaptation of like, okay, I see this person; they're the more powerful. There, they have the followers. I'm gonna go behind this person. I don't want to go with the weaker person because that's how I'm going to survive. I think that's how, like, instinctively, our brain does it without us even realizing. Mm-hmm. We are just drawn to like the people who like can quote unquote, oh, that person will help me survive better in the long run in life. And like, although I know it's like very basic and primal Mm -hmm. when I say it that way, I think that really is how our brain works. Mm -hmm. But to go back, I think leader and follower is differentiated from main character and side character in the sense where followers do follow a leader and not necessarily everyone follows a main character. They're just the most interesting person there at the time. It doesn't mean we'll follow them. It's just like, oh, this person's doing that or this person's traveling. They're a main character. They're having fun in their lives. I'm not necessarily going to follow whatever they do, but it's just interesting to watch and look at and see them Mm -hmm. taking advantage of their life. I also think it's very necessary to have certain people that are that have the personality and I guess the mindset of a leader and this stuff like stems from a young age. So like, even that's why within friend groups, like one person will stick out a little bit more. And I'm sure if you follow mm-hmm. that person throughout their life, let's say they be, end up becoming like more prominent roles versus like the other people. And it's not to say mm-hmm. that the people that are considered the leader or the followers of the friends group isn't less important, but again, it just different personalities and it's necessary. Like you can only have one president. You can only have one CEO. Like you can only have like one decision maker in general. So it's, it is necessary in life. It's naive to say like, Oh, we have to remove all roles and remove all labels because we can't do that. I think the vital part about any way you like coin these terms, whether you say leader follower, whether you say main character, not main character, whatever it is. I think like from, a par- like parents perspective or like just growing up in this kind of society where I feel like we're only going to continue to like hear these things there's always going to be a new term something unattainable it's just to remind people or like to remind yourself like this goes for us first obviously that every role in its own is important 
you know, like for parents that see this on social media, I have like younger cousins. I see their parents are always like so distraught about the newest thing that's out and how to make sure their kids are like feeling confident and they're happy with who they are and whatnot. It's just, I feel like you have to constantly remind people like, okay, who cares? Like you do this or your personality is like this, but you're just as important because of this, because of this, you know, like you may not have to demand attention every time you walk into the room. You may not be the loudest in the crowd, but your role is still important because of this. Your presence is still important because of this. So it's kind of like not losing your own narrative or like being obviously, like you guys said, being confident enough or being comfortable enough in your own shoes that whether you are, can be considered the hottest thing at that time or the newest item at that time, you're still important and you're still um like your presence still makes a difference you know like just being happy with who you are and i just feel like that just gets harder and harder as social media grows it's like a, it's a monstrosity <laughs> confidence <laughs> is so important and on top mm-hmm. of teaching your like kids in the next generation confidence an important important thing is to just teach them like morals that even if society is shifting towards one way you are strong enough to be like no I'm not going to follow this trend because I believe this is wrong and that I'm going to stick to my values. It's so difficult. Like, how do you instill that? I feel like with like uh, society right now where it's constantly like, about like trends and like following up with all these new things, it's really hard to instill that, like sticking to your morals and values, especially when they don't align with like what you truly believe. So I feel you think like you're judging them. if like, oh, just because I do this and you don't do this. Ugh. Yeah. And it's really hard in a place where it's all about like, you know, doing the latest, even like putting yourself out there and like, this is what you should be doing. And Mm -hmm. like, you should always look fashionable and beautiful and like all of these like things. And it's like, it it could be toxic. And I think we need to find a good medium. Although I do think social media is huge and it just continues to grow. I do just in the terms of like being fashionable and being on top of your game. I also think that, social media we've come a long way from that as well like i think a lot more people are like loud about being natural and about going being yourself like not always wearing makeup not always looking 100 percent. like there's a lot on social media there are a lot of actors and actresses that suddenly are like coming out and they look normal they're just normal they have stretch marks they have acne and even like there's always stories about models and such that don't want their photographs to be touched up because they want to look a certain way. They want to look realistic and like to teach others to be natural. But although that's all great and that's all positive body imaging and whatnot and building confidence, I think for parents, one of the biggest thing is not allowing your kids to take part until a certain age. I think it's so, so important that impressionable minds not be on social media. Like parents, regardless of the fight that your kids put up, regardless of how ostracized you feel like your kids are or how isolated, I really, really think that the number one thing you can do for your child, for them to have a good future, is to keep them away from it for as long as possible. Like, I don't think 10-year-olds should be on Instagram. I don't think they should be on TikTok. Like, It's just so toxic from such a young age that when you get to like your teen where you're, you care more about fitting in your, your confidence has already been shot. Like everything you think your life is, is garbage. Everything like you just already feel so badly about yourself at such a young age that by the time you're at that stage in life where you're figuring yourself out, you're already lost and like distraught. Malak, I 100% agree with you, except for the fact that I think we're always impressionable even when we become young adults. It's like, yeah, even if you be like your entire teenage years, now I'm in college. Oh, I'm a confident person. Like that's not true. You can lose your confidence when you start seeing everybody else doing a certain thing and you're not doing it. I feel I like agree. limiting social media at all ages is the key. <laughs> I agree. Huela. I was just, I just met like after a certain age, I don't think, parents have complete control over what kids do anymore. Yeah, so that, so I just, yeah. So I just met like at those young ages, like when I see fifth graders that look like they're 25 on Instagram, like, what are you doing? Yeah. I want to Where's your parent? Where's your mom? Where's your dad? Like, what are they doing? Why are you allowed to do this? Like, I'm so confused. Yeah. So that was my thing. Like 
the ages you can control, children shouldn't have a cell phone at a young age. I don't care that everyone has a cell phone. Like they shouldn't have a cell phone. They don't need it. Your parent is so involved in your life that they know what's going on. Cell phones aren't necessary. So things like that, where your parent can has complete control, I think up until the age of like, I want to say 15 or 16, give or take. But after that, what is it? Five. Like 25. <laughs> yeah. After that, like kids kind of can do their own things and they can hide it and get away with it. That's one thing. But before that, like there should they have no business being on those accounts. I'm sorry. They're, and if you're a parent that your child does, then I heavily suggest you're constantly monitoring what's going on on your children's accounts. Yeah. Like the pictures they're looking at, the videos they're watching, like it can be a downward downward spiral very, very quickly. Sometimes though, I've also seen like parents that do try their best to like put these controls and put things in like um, making sure their kids are not on these platforms. But I feel like some kids, no matter what oh. you do as a parent, will find other ways. <laughs> like to do it and sometimes parents aren't you know informed or know what's the latest thing like I know I don't always know what not that I'm a parent but like I don't know always what's what's trending like even this main character thing like I didn't know it was a thing until like I heard people talk about it I don't I didn't see the TikToks you know and it's it's that stuff and um, going back to my point but I feel like even back then it used to maybe not be on like your phone but there was the internet like there was AOL like I don't know if you guys remember these like uh these hotmail like, <laughs> yeah like you were able to talk to people and like your classmates and your parents probably didn't know this stuff really existed but I know some people have like certain folders that you can hide um, I remember reading up about this like where you know kids are slick sometimes and even if you try if they want to do what they want to do you, like but it's so much more accessible now than it was once upon a time like before even if you were on the internet like it was dial up. So like if someone was using the landline, you couldn't be on the internet or they knew you were on the internet, you know, like things were different or you had to go to the public library to use the computer for one hour because that's all you were allotted versus now our phones have internet, our iPads, our laptops, our everything that you can imagine can be linked to the internet, you know? And I a hundred percent agree with you, Inara. I don't think, I think a few years ago or whatnot, kids just became so incredibly, incredibly slick that there are a hundred million ways that they can get away with things. Like, I agree with you in the sense that even when I hear about things that people were doing in high school and stuff now, I'm like, what? Like, who came up with that idea? Or how did they do that? But it, it just comes back to like, just being, having a really strong household, having a really strong family connection. Like, even for kids that are being slick, just having like, open communication or a healthy home it'll make the difference in everything your child encounters whether it's social media or peer pressure or anything these main character terms these leader followers like it'll make the world of a difference with your child circling back to not only the original topic of this podcast but (laughs) the original purpose of what a main character is where it is just having more positive energy in your life what are some tips you guys can give that makes that idea more healthy and present in a person's life so you make sure you put the best makeup on dress up spend okay. hours making <laughs> very loud and obnoxious <laughs> no i said the main the first the pictures and only pick one that you think is good enough no not the toxic <laughs> way it was misinterpreted nowadays to the first part of it where it's you just have more energy in your life focus on you be the main character in a in a healthy way in a positive way I think one of the things that I like is I feel like it, it makes you have more of an optimistic mind when you like something that you could do to be more of a main character and I think this is what it, it, it's supposed to do but giving you that self-control because I feel like a lot of times people who kind of um, are more anxious or depressed feel like they don't have control over their lives, which is why there's an increase in that. So I feel like one of the things that I do like is how do you take control of your life and know that you are in control of your own narrative. And so I feel like if you put that in perspective and in mind, then you'll have a healthier, positive, you will have that confidence. So I feel like just changing and shifting your mind so that you know that you do have control over your choices. You do have control over your own happiness. That does give you that power back. So that's something that I would, you know, that's something I like about the concept. And I feel like you should really take that on. Mm -hmm. I think 
uh, something additional I would add is to be more introspective too about your life. Instead of just going through to stop, take a minute and like think about your decisions, think about your actions and even get into things that do help with that, such as like journaling, writing something down. Even if a lot of people say, oh, I'm not a good writer. It doesn't have to be pretty and you don't have to be good at it. It's just for you to write it down, for you to feel like you're thinking about what you're doing. And even just asking questions that you might not think about regularly, such as a fun one that I always like is like, okay, if you had an obituary, what would you like to be written on it? So how how would you want to be remembered? Or if you could go back and tell your younger self something, what would it be? And then so that your future self can now live with this rule also. So just being more introspective about your life. Mm-hmm. I feel like those two confidence for sure. Um, on top of being introspective, kind of just living in the moment and not comparing yourself in your life to others. So like, if I have to work today, like that, that is going to be my life and let me be happy about it. Let me live in the moment. If there's going to be a party tonight, I'm going to go and enjoy it, live in the moment and not be like, oh, this person's prettier. This person's dressed better. Like just live in the moment and be confident with who you are. Yes. And I would wrap that up by saying, I think in order to be the true definition of a main character, you actually have to prioritize what matters. There are so many things that like as you grow older, you try to take part in or at the moment seem so important. And then in hindsight, literally weeks later or whatnot, you'll realize how unimportant it is or how naive you were at the moment. So if you ever feel like overwhelmed or you ever feel like you have to take a step back, I think just realizing what's important and what's actually under your control helps you to live the best version of your life or to get the most out of your life, honestly. And then at the end of the day, to remember, it's not a movie. You're not living in a movie. (laughs) You have the really boring day. You have the really lame activities. You have work and school and everything in between. And that's just how we progress. There's no going around that, right? Like whatever your picture of success is, you're going to have a lot of boring time in between. And that's why, like Inara said, a movie is only an hour and a half and a life is like 60 to 70 years. On <laughs> like, it's just the way things are. Not everything can be fun. Not everything can be interesting. At the end of the day, that's what makes the interesting stuff so much more interesting and the fun time so much more fun. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of To Whom It May Concern. If you haven't heard the term main character, it was brought to you by the Modern Gunkies today. You can definitely delve into your own. Like if you look it up on social media and stuff, you'll definitely get a better understanding of what we were discussing today. But please continue to tune in every week to listen to a new episode. If at any point you liked anything you heard today, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. If you don't already, hit that subscribe button so you're notified every time we drop a new episode. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The Modern Skeps. And as always, if there's anything you'd like us to discuss, please feel free to email us at themodernskeps at gmail.com. Sincerely, The Modern Skeptic. P.S. Every individual is a main character.